free at last. Isn't that a delightful thought? Anybody here have anything in their life that they would like to be free of? Does it involve a relationship with somebody else? Almost everything in our life involves some sort of a relationship. But, you know, we carry around these things that uh, disturb us, they disrupt us, they're uncomfortable, and they have a tendency to uh, demoralize us. But we don't do anything about them. We just think that's the way it is. That's just part of my reality. When in essence, we have the power, we have the intelligence, we have the potential to change our reality. And that's a pretty far out thought, to change our reality. Everybody in here has their own individual reality. You have your reality, I have my reality. They're all different. And our realities are based on what we've been taught, on different beliefs that have been imposed upon us, on things that we've imagined or come to believe to be true. Much of our reality is not based on the truth, but rather it's based on false thinking. Some of our reality is based on truth. But the fact of the matter is we're beginning a series today called Conscious Evolution. And Conscious Evolution is becoming aware of the fact or awakening to the truth that we have everything it takes to create a new reality, a greater reality, one in which we have much more peace of mind, we're happier, we're experiencing more love in our lives, and all those things that we wish to be free of are left behind. They don't exist in the new reality. Conscious evolution. Now, over the last month, I've been going around to different places. It might be a Christmas party of some sort or some other gathering. And I've been talking this series up because I think it's really important. Conscious evolution. And one of the first questions that comes up is what exactly does conscious evolution mean? And my answer is the same to every single person. And that is, show up January 17th at 10.30 and find out. <laughs> now the surprising thing is, I don't see anybody in the audience that I gave that answer to. So it might not have been the right way to respond. But evolution is the gradual development of something from a simple state to a complex state. Each and every one of us in this room began in a very simple state of being a, uh, a single cell, and we have evolved into a very complex state of this thinking, walking, um, talking person that can uh, not only reflect on life, but also can reflect back on ourselves. So evolution is the process of how everything came into existence. It is the backbone of our existence. Evolution began 14 billion years ago in this universe. That's when the universe was created. And that's kind of a, a mind-numbing uh, figure, 14 billion. It seemed like a lot until um, our national debt got up to the trillions. But Carl Sagan did a uh, clever thing. He condensed it all down into the period of one year. So you take the 14 billion years of evolution, from the very start at the Big Bang to this present moment right here, right now, 14 billion years, if that were to be condensed down into one year, what would it look like? Now, I haven't thought this through, so you're going to have to bear with me, and if there's mathematicians or engineers in the audience, um, please don't um, count my steps to make sure everything is accurate, but I want to just kind of do a visual of the length of the stage is 14 billion years of evolution. And we're going to condense it into one year. Now the one year begins January 1st at 12 o'clock midnight. That's when the Big Bang took place. Is everybody following me here? It's, if it's a new concept, it's kind of hard to grasp, but we're going to look at evolution from the beginning to now in a one-year period. So, <clears throat> January 1st, midnight, the Big Bang took place, the universe came into being. Now it's interesting, for the next 10 billion years, or all the way from January to September, not much happened. Especially nothing happened in, um, that was significant to us as human beings. The universe just was, it was expanding, it was the uh, stars were being created, that kind of thing. But for 10 billion years or nine months, September, nothing takes place. 
Then something miraculous takes place in September, and that is the Earth is birthed by the universe. The Earth comes into existence. This is in September of the year. Then we move to December of the year, and that is when the Earth begins to produce protein molecules. For one billion years, the protein molecules just kind of bang around. They fleet here and they fleet there, and there's no sense of, of um, coordination or organization to them. But then a billion years later, and now we're talking December um, 15th, I believe, December 15th, for some reason, and nobody knows why, the molecules which have existed for a billion years suddenly decide to connect with each other. They begin to congregate. And as the molecules congregate and they compress, the energy builds up to the point where this incredible transformation takes place and this group of molecules makes a cell. And with the cell comes the beginning of life, the miracle of the universe, as far as we know. So with life, and now we're looking at December um, 20th, with life, the cell learns how to duplicate itself. One cell splits and becomes two. Two cells split and they become four. Well, if you continue to double like that for, uh, say, 30 days or so, you're in the millions of cells. But the cells have some sort of a divine order. They have some sort of a divine direction where as they begin to congregate, they're going to construct something. They're going to build something. There's some sort of a design, there's some sort of an idea, there's some sort of a, a, a overarching goal or motivation for the cells to do this. And by the time we get to December 28th, now the two, two, I mean, we've got two days left in the year, or three days, and we still have cells. By December 28th, <clears throat> sea creatures and plants of a uh, sea nature start to be created. By December 29th, we have reptiles. December 30th, we have dinosaurs. So all this time, 14 billion years almost, what we've come up with is an Earth that has reptiles and dinosaurs. On December 31st, the last day of the year, at 6 o'clock in the morning, apes come into existence. It's the last day of the year, six o'clock in the morning. Now, this is all very interesting, but something's missing. I mean, where are human beings? At 11.58, two minutes before the end of the year, the first human being comes into existence. And from that point forward, things really pick up speed. At 11.45, art, poetry, reading, writing come into existence. Now, when we get to the very end, we have five seconds before this moment right here, right now, on the cosmic calendar. The 14 billion years we have three or four seconds left. And everything that you see here, everything on the earth of a man-made nature came about in that last three seconds. Now there's two things amazing about that. The first is, <clears throat> how did it happen? The easy answer is God. God did it. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but how did God do it? How did we go from nothing to sitting here in these comfortable seats with minds that can reflect on what's going on? I mean, in three seconds, we were sitting outside our caves pondering the beauty of a full moon, and three seconds later, we were walking on it. How did that happen? Well, Nature's nature is to create. And it has tools with which it creates. And the four cornerstones of creation 
or of creativity are, first of all, potential. Everything you see here had the, was in the form of potential in the beginning. It had to be. Potential is the idea. It is the blueprint. It is the image. It is the, the um, picture of what is to be in the invisible world of spirit. So there has to be the image, there has to be the idea in the invisible world of spirit before it can manifest into the physical world. So the first thing was potential. And the second thing was intelligence. The universe has, has uh, potential. The universe has intelligence. And what that means is it's able to create the image uh, within the realm of potential of what it wants to manifest in the physical realm. So there's intelligence. And the third thing is power. There had to be the energy, there had to be the drive, there had to be the motivation, there had to be something behind this all to take the steps to create what it was that was held in the sacred image of spirit. So we have potential, we have intelligence, we have power. But nothing happens without desire. Desire is the fuel, desire is the drive, desire is the, the energy that moves us forward to do something. So this is a very wonderful um, lesson on evolution in the history of the earth. But what does it mean to us? Well, the fact of the matter is that you are a, a um, part of evolution. You, are, you have the same nature within you that the nature of the universe holds. But the bottom line is you have the same powers. You have potential within you. You have intelligence to create within your mind an image of how you'd like your life to be, whether it's a big changes or little changes. You can create that image. You have the power within you to go forth and do what needs to be done to create that in the outer world. But you have to have the desire. Without the desire, you're going to stay on the couch and watch TV. So we have potential, we have intelligence, we have power, and we have desire. So let's see how this works. Let's say that I desire to win the lottery. Last Wednesday, I wanted to win the lottery last Wednesday, the one and a half billion dollars. I have the desire to do that. Do I have the potential? Sure, we all do. We have the potential to go buy a lottery ticket, and we have the potential to possibly win. Do I have the intelligence? No, I don't. <laughs> I can't determine the numbers that are going to win the lottery. That's not within my intellectual capacity. And do I have the power? No, I don't. I can't force it to happen. I can't make it happen no matter what I do. Therefore, that dream, that desire is not going to manifest because it doesn't have the four pillars that creativity is based on. It has potential and it has desire, but it doesn't have intelligence and it doesn't have power, so it's not going to happen. Now this is where many of us, myself included, sometimes get a little bit um, upset or we get downhearted because there's something that we want so bad in our lives, but it just doesn't seem to happen. If it doesn't happen, it means that either we don't have the potential to make it happen, we don't have the intelligence to figure out the design of how it'll happen, the power, or our desire is wilting. We don't think it'll happen, so the desire kind of goes away. So whatever you decide you want to change in your life, whatever you decide you want to move away from and be free of, if those four things are in order, we know you have the potential. A principle of nature is, if you can recognize a desire within yourself, that's an indication, that's a confirmation that the potential to gratify that desire or to fulfill that desire is within you. And that is the primary course of all history. Everything began with a desire. You know, Christopher Columbus desired to come to this country. Uh, somebody 80 years ago was sitting in church on a hard wooden bench. They were uncomfortable they had the desire to have a comfortable seat. So voila, here we have nice, padded, comfortable seats. 
The car we drove in here came out of desire. Everything comes out of desire, and that desire is an indication that we have the potential to make it come true if we have the intelligence, the power to follow through on it. So as you look at your life, it, this doesn't always mean creating a, uh, creating a new reality. It doesn't always mean like overhauling the entire uh, reality that you have. It can be one little thing. I desire to uh, not get angry in traffic. I have the potential to do that. I have the intelligence to do that. I've got the power to do that. So why do I continue upsetting myself with other people driving in a way that I don't uh, approve of. So many times I talk to people and they say, well, I will be happy if my daughter quits drinking. She's an alcoholic. I will be happy if the weather in Kansas City is a constant 75 degrees. I will be happy if the Chiefs win the Super Bowl. I will be happy with that. I have that desire for all of those things, but don't have the potential to make it happen. When you create your reality, that is your reality. It's an inside job. It's the way you see the world. And you can't impose your reality on somebody else. The woman can't go to her daughter and say, in order for me to be happy, in order for my reality to be right, you have to quit drinking. That's pulling her into her reality. So when we look at a reality, it's not so much creating new or creating something that we don't have, but it's really taking a close look at our lives and discovering exactly what Jerome's saying, saying about what do I want to be free of? And sometimes it is a relationship. Sometimes it's an addiction. Sometimes it's, it's uh, something in the outer world that is a constant source of displeasure for us. When we move away those things that disrupt us or disturb us, and we discover the reality that we truly desire, which is one based on peace, harmony, and love. For the next six weeks, we're going to take a very close look at conscious evolution. And the first point is, is coming, to, coming to the conclusion with total confidence that you have the power within you to create the reality that you desire. You have the intelligence. You have the power. All we need is a desire. Now, there's a time when you came into this world. It's when you were born. That's when your life began. There's a time when your life will be complete and you will leave this world. Your life will end. In between the beginning and the end, there is time. Timeline, we call it our lifetime. And for each and every one of us, we've used up some time. You know, from birth to death, I am probably about right here now. But so what? I still have this much time. What am I going to do with it? What are you going to do with your time? The most precious thing you have, and I want you to stop and think about that for a moment, the most precious thing that you have in your entire life is your time. So what are you going to do with it? Are you just going to let it unfold? the way it does? Or are you going to take an active part? Are you going to be a participant in it? In the book of John, it says, in God's mansion, there are many rooms. Well, on our evolutionary path as human beings, in this moment, at this time, we have come to the door that leads into the next room of our evolution. We've knocked on the door. It's open. We've received insights and awareness that ensure us that we can continue to move on to bigger and better things. But we have to take the first step. And sometimes that can be scary. You know, I might not like my, I might not like my reality, but I know it. And because I know it, it's comfortable. It's safe. So I hold back. I don't try anything new. I sit on the sidelines of life and just let my time fly away. In a moment, we're going to go into meditation. And as we do so, I would like you to think of how your life would be if your reality changed. It might be one little thing. It might be one big thing. Think of how that would be and then imagine it. Create that design. Create that blueprint. Create that, that plan within your mind so you can actually see it. 
you can see how your life would be if you didn't have this one problem or this challenge or any other thing. And sometimes it means not necessarily changing anything out there, but changing something in here, changing our thought towards it. You have time. It's precious not to be wasted, but to be enjoyed, to be savored, to be fulfilled by it. So for the next six weeks, we're going to learn exactly how to do that, step by step by step, and it's really quite simple. Now, we have to stop and, and realize that existence has been going on for 14 billion years. We arrived on the cosmic calendar once again in the last three seconds. We're newborns. We're the newest people on earth. We're babies, so to speak. Yet somehow we get in our mind that we are the end product, that we're the finish, that this is the end line. And that's not it at all. The powers within us and the future before us is so mind-boggling that we can't even imagine the things that are going to happen. Just as the people 100 years ago couldn't possibly imagine the life that we're living today. This is your life over the next six weeks. Let's take a good look at it and model it in to the life that you desire. And we'll now move into meditation.